making some sprouted wheat bread today. Now, I cannot remember where all I found the recipe from. I actually combined a couple of different recipes. I do remember where I found the method from though, so I will link that recipe in the description below. So we're doing, uh-oh, uh, I'm babysitting my grandbaby today, so if you hear the TV in the background, that's why, and it's almost his nap time in about 10-15 minutes. Um, hopefully, I will be done with putting everything into the bread maker by the time I need to put him down for a nap. And that is something that I'm really excited to tell you and share with you is how easy and quick this sprouted bread is. Okay, so first you have to gather all your ingredients, which I've got most of them right here. I'll show them to you as we go. Um, I don't use any particular brands, not really. So if you have a question about brands, you can ask me in the comments but and I'll tell you, but I don't really think it makes a difference. So let's start with one, let's see, one and a half cups plus two tablespoons of warm, ah, <laughs> of warm water. I get these songs in my head all day long. Bless his little heart, he's nine months old. My first grandbaby, or my only one for a long time, and that's fine. I love him, he's my heart. I even love the music he listens to. Okay. Okay. The directions say, add the water, honey, coconut oil, and salt to the bread maker. So we're going to start with the water. And I'll show you. Bread maker's empty right now. Except for the little paddle in there that's going to help knead the bread. Okay. So now I'm going to add the warm water first. Then it wants two tablespoons of honey and two tablespoons of coconut oil. We'll start with the coconut oil. Oh, it's almost gone. I gotta get some more. That's probably about two, right there. Don't know if there's two tablespoons here or not, so let's see. So there's one. One tablespoon. My hands all dirty again. Now let's see if that's two. You know what? It looks like uh, just a little bit more than two, so I won't quite finish that off. But it came close. Okay, so that's two tablespoons of honey. Okay, and nothing wrong there. So we've got the water, the honey, the coconut oil, and salt to the bread maker. You need one and a half to two teaspoons of salt. Oh, and I will link this recipe in the description below. Um, I use Recipe Keeper, so I think I can link directly to it. If not, I will just write it out for you. There's one, and not quite two teaspoons of salt. Okay, so I've added all that. Next is four cups, yes, four cups of sprouted flour. Sprouted flour, here we go. I keep mine, these nice little nifty containers, I love them. And these are actually removable. I printed them off on paper and then this is the stuff. Clean, so if I ever needed to change it up for something else, I could. All right, so four cups of flour. There's one, two, some more sprouted flour soon. That's one thing, it takes a lot of flour. So, that's okay. I like homemade bread. Okay, and a quarter cup of vital wheat gluten. Now I buy this off Amazon. I buy the sprouted wheat flour off Amazon as well. Just easy. So, a quarter cup of vital wheat gluten. Okay. And then, I add Two teaspoons of yeast, and the yeast cannot touch the water. Now, it is my understanding that this much yeast, and because of the process and everything, it's okay to have in an e loaf of bread. 
I don't remember where I saw that, but I saw it somewhere. If you find that I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so that's everything. I got the water, honey, coconut oil, and salt. And then we added the flour and the yeast and the vital wheat gluten. Set the bread maker to dough on mine. This is an Oster bread maker. My dough setting is number nine, so I will choose number nine. And I believe that's it. Start. That's it, I'm done. Now it's going to mix it and knead it and get it all ready. I will not be cooking it in the bread maker. I will be cooking it in the oven. So I will come back in a few minutes, an hour and a half my time, less than a minute your time, and I will show you what is next. Okay, all right. Okay, so it's been an hour and a half for me and the bread has been kneaded and it has risen and it's looking pretty good, the dough. Looks pretty good there. So the next step is to, let's see, preheat the oven to the lowest temp. So I'll put it right on warm. And then I need to get a little bread pan out. Um, now the recipe I had said divide it into two loaf pans. I guess I'll go ahead and do that. I, I remember thinking about it and thinking I could have made two loaves, or I could have made one bigger loaf, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow my directions because it's been a while since I made it. And spray with non-stick spray. So non-stick spray. Okay. Make sure to get the sides. Okay. So I've got the non-stick spray. Got my two sprayed pans. Uh, shape each portion into a ball. Press top onto the bottom of the pan to get a little bit of the non-stick spray on top of the loaf. And place each loaf in the pan. So I'm a stickler for the consistency. And so I am going to actually Way the dough, so I'm basically splitting it into two different. Here, I'm gonna move this so y'all can see a little better. Put these right here. Okay, so I'm going to split them into two loaves so I can, I'm gonna weigh them because I wanna make sure that they're both the same size. That way the baking will be even as well. All right, so let's see how much our dough, take this out. <laughs> Let's see how much our dough weighs. All right, it's just, it's about 36 and a half ounces. So we're gonna go with 15, 18 ounces each. So let's see if I can get this divided up into 18-ish ounces each. More. That'll do it. Okay, so shape it into a ball. And I am just, as you can see, shaping it, shaping it. Okay. It's kind of an oblong ball like a potato. That's kind of what it looks like, is like a potato. And I'm gonna get some of that oil on it and put it there. Okay, now I'll do the other one. Shape it into a ball, okay, into a potato, make it a little potato, okay, here we go, and get some oil on it, and put it there, okay, so now we have our two loaves of bread ready to go, and the last time I made this, I think I remember it didn't even fill up the whole pan, but that's fine, it doesn't matter. All right, now we're going to put the loaves in the warm oven for 30 minutes because it's going to basically rise again. It rose some in the bread maker. Now it's gonna rise some more in the oven for about 30 minutes. So, let's go ahead and 
put these in. Turn the oven off. Timer on for 30 minutes. Okay, so the timer's going for 30 minutes. And after the bread has risen for that 30 minutes, we will carefully remove the two bread loaves from the oven, heat the oven to 350, and then we will bake it and be almost done. So I'll see you back here in 30 minutes to pull those out of the oven. Okay, so the timer just went off. It has been 30 minutes and the bread should have completed rising. So I'm going to gently and quietly take it out. We got just a little bit bigger, and so they didn't fill up the pan, and that's okay. Put that in there. And here's the other one. Looking pretty good there. Okay, and now we're going to preheat the oven to 350. And we are going to put them back in the oven after it has finished preheating and we'll cook it for another 30 minutes and see how it goes. So I'll see you when it's done. Okay, the oven just went off and it's time to pull the bread out. So I'm gonna do that real quick. There's one. There's two and they're looking really good. Now to keep the bread crust soft, I'm gonna add just a little bit of butter. Again, this is gonna stay in the E setting, of course, so we don't wanna add too much. And I'm just rubbing some bread. Let me show you. <laughs> if you hear a little crying in the background, that's my grandson. <laughs> he's getting his diaper cheeks by his mama and he's not happy. I was giggling, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. Turn it around, make sure I get all the sides. Okay. Right there. And let's do this other one. Just a little bit of butter. Makes that crust nice and soft. At least that's what I read or heard in the video. All right, and that's it. Looks really good. Show on this camera, looks pretty good. And I will add a couple of still shots at the end of the video to show you after it is cooled off and I'll cut it open. Okay, so the sprouted bread has cooled off enough. It's still pretty warm but it has cooled off enough that we're gonna go ahead and cut into it and see. Mmm, it's so soft. Perfect sandwich bread. And look at that. It looks really, really good. I see the steam coming off of it because it's still pretty warm. Yummy. So I'll finish cutting it after it completely cools. And then I do keep my bread in the fridge so it lasts a little bit longer. And then I will use it for sandwiches, toast. I'll make croutons out of it. But if I want something quick and simple, this takes less than three hours. And most of that time is just sitting around waiting. So try it. You might really enjoy it. Mm -hmm.